Hey, Eli here. Today I'm going over the second video for uh, image quality and high ISO comparison for this is this one is for the R5 R6 II. Uh, history on me is I photographed for 17 years. Uh, I have eight years with Canon. I uh, photographed with Nikon for a couple years. Sony with a couple years. And in 2020, um, 20, I purchased in October the R5, the R6, and I photographed with those. I photographed those until. August of 2021, a crazy year. So I decided to go with two R6s. So I had a consistent platform for all my editing. And then I mixed in the GFX 100S. The reason I chose the R6, the original one, was because it was easier to edit and it did better in low light. And there was, there was just some little added perks like, you know, two SD slots versus a CF Express Type B. So just a little cheaper. So I sold the R5. And then um, photographed for a year with just those cameras. They were awesome. Loved them. Amazing images. And just, just beautiful stuff. Um, and, you know, always had in the back of my mind, is 20 megapixels enough? You know, is that good enough? Uh, probably. <laughs> um, and, yeah, never had any problems. Have clients print large images, uh, canvases, all kinds of, you know, prints. I photographed each of those cameras up to about 200,000 each. Um, and so lots and lots of images. And so... Uh, you know, fast forward, I got the R3. Uh, that was a really fun camera, but it was had a lot of unnecessary features. And then when the R6 II came out, I sold the R3 because I didn't need the electronic shutter at 30 frames per second. And then I didn't, it was too big. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of things I didn't need. The eye tracking didn't work for me. So picked up the R6 II and thing is awesome. Uh, I love it. Also, I did have a few focus issues I had to work out with that focus system where I had to slow it down a little bit and remove subject detect um, and then just set an eye button, focus button, so I'd have more control because if I tried to photograph a ring on a hand and there was a face in the frame, it would just go straight to the face. So enough about that. That's a whole nother review. Today we are talking about prints. Um, I wanted to see what happens if I print um, 45 megapixels versus now 24 megapixels in 100 ISO as well as 10,000 ISO. So the theory is that the less resolution you have on your sensor for size, same size, higher resolution is gonna do worse than low light. My thought was always, you're zooming in twice as much, so maybe that's it. So the reason that you know, it doesn't do as good. So I wanted to see in print, I got as prints as big as I could. I've got the um, Canon ProGraph 1000. I've got the 17 by 22 inch or 43 by 56 centimeter. Pro uh, Luster Paper. Uh, I like Hanamule a lot, but I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on Hanamule for test prints. So we've got some pretty large prints. Like my brother's face. He's going to love these. Um, my mom will put them everywhere. We'll see. It's the youngest of four, so he's the baby. Um, but yeah, so we printed um, this size, 100 ISO, outside with the 70 to 200. I framed exactly the same as best I could um, with the R5, R6 II. And then I enhanced the resolution on the uh, R6 to see if I could tell the difference between, you know, the enhanced resolution in Lightroom. So, which doubles the resolution and then quadruples the pixels. So, if that makes sense, look it up if you don't know. Um, it's super easy, just takes time. You gotta push the button, let it go. And then I also photographed at 10,000 ISO and doors, low lights, um, and got the same size prints. I had to crop these a little bit just to match them up because, you know, it was doing best in camera, but I didn't get it perfect. So let's start out with the 100 um, ISO photos. And these photos are all downloadable. Uh, they're gonna be in the same folder as the X-T5 and GFX 100S folder. So check them both out. And you can also compare. I wasn't trying to compare Fuji to Canon, but you can if you want. Now you have these tools, so feel free to play with them. Let me know in the comments if it helps, if you don't already know or have these cameras or haven't used them, because I know what it's like. So I want to use cameras. I'm, I'm at the point in my career where I can use most anything other than Leica <laughs> at the moment. Um, but I just would have to sell cameras and buy other cameras. So I can rent for now, like Sony and Nikon. Um, but, you know, I'm not a, the biggest fan of those two manufacturers at the moment. Um, I do prefer Canon and Fuji at the moment, um, just because that's how my workflow and style has progressed. But yeah, start out with the R5, amazing resolution image, 45 megapixels. I mean, it's awesome. It's my headshot lens, I love it. Um, and when I compare it to the R6 II, 
So yeah, back to the images you can download. There's raw images and then there's photos of these prints. So just, you know, so you can look at the prints because I can't really show you on camera too well, you know, what those prints look like. Um, it's just not doable unless you come in here and look at them. Even me looking at these for like minutes, like 15 minutes, <laughs> I can't tell the difference so much between the R5 and the R6 at this size. Um, there's a little bit of crop, but um, you know, I, I can't tell. And there's a little bit maybe of like sharpness on the R5 slightly and the R6 too. And even on the enhanced, I'm just getting more like of the eyelashes, like up in here, I'm seeing just a little more sharpness on the eyelashes um, versus the two. So, you know, is the R5 worth it when you have the enhanced feature? Um, the enhanced feature doesn't always work well, especially in the noise reduction one, but it works pretty darn good. Um, yeah, I've taken some R6 photos, printed those side by side, the original 20 megapixel, and I've seen just more sharpening going on. Um, you'd really have to like print probably a huge print or I'd have to crop down really small to, to figure it out. But most of my clients don't print 20 by 30 or larger that I know of, uh, maybe a canvas and viewing distance on that is not going to be this close. You know, even I almost need a magnifying glass to, to figure this out because I really can't tell with my eyes. Um, I've got good eyes. Eye doctor says so. Uh, but uh, yeah, hard for me to tell, which is awesome. You know, I, I think that I'm uh, just saying off the bat here, I'm most likely going to use the R6 II for most of my work. Um, I'm going to make a review on that. Um, and <laughs> just number one is it starts up so much faster than the R5 when I turn it on. And I love that they move the on button. I'm just still training my brain because I keep turning on video. So I had to tape over the video. And then, um, yeah, I wish they would have put a lock button on there. Wow. On their manual dial because I... Using two cameras, I always bump it when I pull it over the back. So, all right, on to the uh, low light. 10,000 ISO, we are 1 200th of a second. I'm photographing with the 28 to 70 at F2. It's a really dark room in Boise, kind of like a lounge. And uh, we're both sitting really still, uh, steady. So I was able to shoot low light pretty easily. Um, R5, starting to get a little bit of weird color, uh, like green but, you know, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> Just some interesting colors. Uh, also, this isn't the perfect test because there was a couple LED lights that I didn't catch later. We're kind of flickering because of the, um, you know, the LED flicker. So there's a little bit of a few elements going on. But mainly we're going to look at noise. Uh, does the noise have color in it? Because that's, I don't mind if noise is grainy. Totally, totally fine. It's pretty. Um, and if it gets color, then I got to go to black and white. Uh, images because that color artifacts get funky and that's really the tell when the cameras are doing good low light so just off the bat I'm looking at these two images i'm looking at them go look at the prints i photographed and then download these and you do your own tests but we, mainly i want to see what happens when i print is does it carry over the r6 2 is winning for sure um yeah i don't have any question it's not significant but it's winning you know i think it's it looks pretty good um one thing to note though, I guess, is it is sharper around my brother's ears on the R5 and the R6 um, too. I did an enhanced version noise reduction on the R5. I didn't print that one, I should have, but I got ahead of myself and I did it on the R6 too. And what I noticed on the R6 too is my brother's ears start to get really blurry uh, on the enhanced version versus the regular. So it's reducing the grain, but it's also blurring, but it's not blurring around his eyes, which is cool. Um, I don't know if that's the AI, AI working or what, but like his hair seems to be um, sharper, more contrasty. And I think that this enhanced feature is freaking amazing. It's really cool um, for the noise reduction. I've had it not work on, on a GFX 100S. It just added color noise. And it was, yeah, not, not, it was worse. So I don't know. You, you got to feel it out. And I'm still learning when to use it, when not. I don't want to rely on it, like I said in the other video, because um, it adds to your workflow. And if you're editing, you know, I'm generally photographing anywhere between five and 10,000 images at a wedding, just because it's a long day, it's busy, and I have a second photographer. And then I take that down to a thousand images. So I'm editing a thousand images. 
And it's just, it's going to be a lot of them would have to do this to every one. And then um, it creates a stack or a, it creates a duplicate file. So when you're doing this enhanced feature, now you have two files. Now you got to, you know, read it and say, is this the enhanced? Okay, let's get rid of the other one. So it just adds to the workflow, but it's an awesome feature if you're not shooting in bulk, um, you know, and you have, or if you have the time. So it's nice to know that you can pull this out and, um, you know, make it work for you if you're in a low lit reception or whatever it is. Um, so really quickly, I just wanted to show you the R5 enhanced versus the regular on the computer. Since I didn't print that one, look on here, we can see it's doing a pretty good job. And again, these are at 20%. I don't want to take it too far. I've gone further and it just starts to look fake. And, you know, we're really just trying to enhance the image without taking away. So grain is good. I think it's pretty, um, you know, it, it doesn't bother me at all. I think it, it adds the image in some sense. Um, and I really don't even think, I mean, these are both great. Uh, we're zooming in a lot. And so if you zoom out, you can't tell from here. Uh, but when you zoom in, you're going to see a little bit difference. It also is interesting to me that the color changes right in here. It's just kind of odd. I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, you're seeing a little bit of color change. So yeah, so go download these images. Uh, you go to my website, eloroberts.com, or the link in the description. Uh, there's a page that I've built out or, uh, for photographers under info. And it's just got a lot of reviews. But on there, you can download these images raw and then the pictures of the prints and um, the JPEG output, because that's really what's going to matter is when you convert from RAW to JPEG. And then these are also going to get compressed, most likely, through whoever you upload them to. I didn't compress these at all. I was able to just go file the file and print from my printer, uh, which was awesome. So, and then also just fun tidbits. I use Ink Owl, which in the other video, to refill my ink. It's pretty sweet. It wasn't hard to do at all. Um, you just want to make sure you don't run your tanks dry. So I have 12 tanks in the Canon ProGraph 1000. And then um, those cost me $6.99 to replace them all. But for $200, I get, I think it's 80 milliliters of ink, 12 of them. And then uh, the syringes and everything to fill my cartridges twice. So if you do the math on that, that's a pretty big savings. It's huge. And then um, if I were to print these size prints, gosh, I don't even know. I should look it up. But I think at cost, for me, they're probably in the $50 to $80 range, maybe in there. Um, so these, I would say, are somewhere between Bay Photo and a cheap print, in my opinion. I don't really know. Um, but uh, it's a decent paper. I love Hannah Mule's 100% cotton paper. Uh, the Barita, I think it is. But it, it's spendy. So on a big print like this, um, these cost around, I think, $4 each. And so not too bad, uh, plus the ink, you know, uh, and then time and wasting a lot of time calibrating. Um, <laughs> I think I finally got it dialed to print through Lightroom, but it's really taken a lot of work. So maybe in the future, I'll make a video on how I figured out how to print at home uh, because it's really fun. You know, it's awesome. That's where you want everything to end up in the long run is in a print. Uh, of course, we have all these screens. It's a good place to keep them, but the real memorable ones, you want to print them out. And um, yeah. So I'm going to start doing that, getting some frames and putting art around my house. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, yeah, it's helped me a lot to kind of work through and decide, is the R5 necessary for me? No. Uh, so I'll probably uh, finish the year out with two R6s at weddings. And then um, I may keep the R5 for some video stuff, which I'm videoing on now. And then up here, I've got the R6 II. Uh, so yeah, R6 II for me. I think it's an amazing camera. Um, I'll do a video on it, how I toned down the autofocus to work for me, and then why I think it's the best Canon camera for weddings and anything documentation. Um, if you're just photographing portraits, I think the R5 is plenty, or even the R6. Uh, the autofocus is really good, uh, but being able to turn my camera on in like half a second, to one second, versus a couple seconds is pretty significant when I'm on and off all day with multiple cameras. Also, using an R5 and an R6 hurts my brain a lot because the the button layout's different, but, but yeah, so enough about that. Let me know in the comments how this worked out for you and go download those images. So thanks for watching.